You know, mini trucking's been around for many years, and there's been a lot of cool trucks and a lot of cool styles. But you know what? Arguably one of the coolest mods you can do to your truck is the convertible top. Today, we're gonna show you how to cut a top using a Radical Tops old kit. Now, a lot of people use the kit, and there's a lot of people who do the metal mod convertible. Today, we're gonna show you with the kit and let you see how it's done with the tricks I've used over the years that I've learned. Follow along, we'll show you how it's done. Check it out. My name is Chris Walker. I've been a mini trucker and customizer for many years, since 1986 when I started my first one, dabbling just a little bit. I've owned many trucks over the years, custom paint, dump beds, convertible tops, and you name it, I've done it. This is my 1986 Chevy S10. I got a lot of big plans for this rough basket. One of the things I want to do is do a convertible top, dump bed, I got ground effects for it. We're going old school, baby. But until then, we'll do some how-to videos on how to do an old school mini truck. Today, we're going to show you how to cut a convertible top. It's going to be pretty cool. We're going to show you a lot of tips and tricks and new things you can do to convertibles when you, do, when you install them that won't make them leak like a waterfall like the ones in the 80s and 90s did. So follow along, we'll have some fun. Here are the basic components of your convertible top kit. First, we have the bows that go across the top of the roof. After that, we have the rear cab wall pieces, upper and lower. They attach the, under the window. Then you have your door caps that go on the roof and door section, upper and lower towards the rear of the cab. Then we have the door top caps. These will not be used. Then you have your hardware and your latch setup. After that, you have various pieces of weather stripping that go in various spots on the convertible top. We're gonna mark our kit for the first top line for the bows that go across the top of the roof. The sound on this video for some reason was lost, but we'll narrate it to let you know what's going on. We're getting ready to mark our line for the top cut right behind the windshield. I'll lay down green masking tape so you can see the line a lot better when you do your cuts. For the first cut, you measure, measure from the top of the windshield back four and three quarters of an inch. And then you draw a line across that. After that, you measure beyond that three eighths of an inch to compensate for the thickness of your convertible top kit. Then you draw that line, then you can start your cut. After marking your roof lines on the top for your cuts, you measure from the back of your door forward, 20 and a half inches. That matches this up, then you draw the line to connect them both. Same as the roof, you draw your second line, three eighths of an inch back to compensate for the thickness of your kit. Now your next is your cab wall line. You start to figure that out, it's 18 and a half inches from the top of your door down. Then you mark your line across, and you do the same on the other side. You connect the lines and mark them all the way across. Now, just like the top, you mark a line right on top of that. Again, 3 eighths of an inch to compensate for your thickness of your kit. Now, before you start your cuts, what you need to do is get all your churn rubber out of here. And then your uh, door sills, you unscrew those. Next, you take your headliner out. Then your sun visors. Once that's done, you can take your seat out if you'd like, or you can move the seat forward whatever works for you. Now, before you start your cuts, I like to start on the cab wall. You come in a few inches, at least five, six inches, you drill a hole on your line. You do the same thing on the other side, so you got the holes on the inside of the cab, then you match them up. That way the inside of the cab line, since it's double wall, matches the outside. If you don't do that, you're gonna have problems. So today at Night Stalker Custom Shop, today we're gonna be doing a convertible top kit on a 86 GMC S15. Uh, we just got the fenders back on, we got the hood on, the bumper, the doors, uh, all new stuff, and uh, I think it's coming together pretty well. So now it's time to cut the top off. What's going on guys? I'm Donnie Walker. Uh, I've been doing mini trucking for about almost six years. We decided for my first vehicle that we were gonna pick up a 1994 Nissan Hardbody uh, single cab. Um, so when we picked that up, we decided we were gonna build a pretty old school style mini truck. And now we got the dump bed kit on it. We decided to do a convertible um, in a Suzu color, that blue. Uh, and then we decided to do uh, some smaller wheels, get it low to the ground. You know some really custom paint uh, make it look pretty pretty old school nothing over about 90 ish 95 and that was uh my first uh vehicle and it ended up being a father-son project and it blew up way more than i was expecting it to
Now we got the tab wall cut. Now it's time to cut the rooftop. Let's do it. Okay, as you can see, we got our first cuts done and the top is off. We already did both cuts on the roof uh, for, to make up for the 3 8 difference. Now, we only did the one cut on the back of the cab wall so we can get the roof off the way. Now we still have to cut the bottom line and then take another 3 8 inch off. After we do that, we'll grind it all smooth, top and back cab wall. Now that we've got our cuts done, we use the grinder, we grind it nice and smooth around the edges, we do the cab wall on the back too and the roof, and then about a half inch back we want to take the paint off so the, the epoxy will stick. Also we got the cut down on the door, and what that does is the door stays with the door and opens up, this top portion gets reattached right here and the kit gets molded right on top of it. So this part never opens. That's a major leak problem. Now, if the water leaks in right here, inside the door, there's a channel. Your water hits that channel, runs down here instead of coming right through up here. Later when we put the kit on, I'll show you exactly why we do this and where the leak problem is. We'll get a little closer look then and explain it, but that's the new trick for that. And it helps tremendously. So right now we just got the top off, we flipped it upside down and when you use a die grinder or a sawzall or whatever you might be using to cut this, there's going to be a lot of burrs around the metal piece there and you're not going to be able to put any uh, adhesive to it. So basically what I'm doing is I'm grinding the whole thing smooth, making it nice and perfect so we can go ahead and get these caps glued on. But while I do that, I'm going around the edges here and then the inside here and I'm going to make them all nice and smooth. I'm going to take some paint off now and uh, give something that give something for that adhesive to uh, actually bond to. And then uh, we should be good to go as far as the top piece itself goes. When it comes to grinding, I mean, you can tell I'm over here sweating bullets. It sucks, but you gotta do what you gotta do to make it perfect. And uh, it's, not, it's not all sunshine and rainbows when you come out here and you gotta, you gotta sit and grind, you gotta cut, you gotta sand everything. It sucks, it really does, it's not a great time. But you gotta do it to make it look good. Yeah, it fucking sucks. Now when we cut the doors to match the same angle as the roof and down at the bottom, we cut them off. Now with this portion right here, gets attached to the roof. So when the roof comes off, these come with it. So they're permanent. Now the problem with that is you have a window channel. The glass can't get through that. So the next step is to cut about a half inch right above the rubber strip all the way down the door and then back down. You cut that off, you trim that up, make it look really nice. That way when the door's closed, when the top's on, you close the door, you can open and close the door, no problem, the glass will get through that. So that's our next step. As you can see here, we've got the tops of our door frames mounted to our roof. And if you look closer, you can see we cut the channel of the window on the outside. So when the roof is on, the window's up, it can clear that and open and close. Now, the part that goes on the roof that we cut off, that mounts to your windshield pillar, we do the same. We cut the channel out, and now we'll get this mounted up. You can see we already cut the, uh, or already uh, sanded the paint off of here end up on the roof this is where your epoxy will hold your convertible kit on that will come next once we get these mounted we can get our latches mounted and then we can epoxy the roof off the, the kit on one of the biggest problems with the original design of the convertible kits was where the windshield bow met the top of the door frame while it closed the problem was well first of all i just got this taped here just to show you for an example i'm not ready to attach it yet when your door would close come in closer here when you're, you put your caps on, when the, and here's the cap for this. When your door would close, this is what you ended up with. You had to leave a gap, otherwise the, the top parts would rub. But even if they rubbed, 
There's no rubber seal here. You cannot seal that up because your door needs to open and close. Look at the gap that you have. That's all going into the interior. No matter how tight you get that without using silicone or rubber over the top of it, you have a waterfall. That's a problem. That's where it got the bad rap for all, all convertibles leak. Well, but most shops though, didn't know how to change that. They just followed along the directions that they got. And that's where you ended up with the problem. That's why you cut this off. You don't install your cap. You cut this portion at an angle, wherever you feel comfortable up here. I do it a little higher so it supports the window. And you gotta adjust this out. This is just kind of there. You, you, you install this permanently mounted up into the, you don't cut the extra metal. You cut it up into the bow. And when this is permanently mounted and then your bows get epoxied on, then you, when you silicone on your bow, you also silicone down here. And then you silicone along your seam right here. No rain gets through that. And then when you close your door, your seam looks like this. Now, when the rain gets into this seam and in this right here, no worry. You have a rubber seal that goes up this whole length and the water hits that, hits your channel, runs down the door where it's supposed to naturally. That solves your problem. Make it happen. Now that we've got all our metal trimmed on the roof and on the truck and ground down to where we need it, we're gonna do a dry run and kind of test fit the convertible kit and kind of masking tape it in place just to see how smooth it is and if everything lines up pretty good. If it does line up pretty good and, and looks okay, we're gonna go ahead and install our latches and latch them down tight and make sure we have a nice tight seal on everything. Once that's done, we're ready to glue it on. This is the radical top latches that come with them. It's the basic uh, draw latch with a, uh, with a little J hook kind of deal. The originals used to latch down. Um, pull this over top. Very, these are very tough. That's about how they work, just like that. The originals right in this area right here had a square and a little pin that, a little piece of metal that popped up. So when you latched them down, they locked tight. These don't have that. So they have a tendency as you turn corners or go into driveways and, and flex the chassis, they, they tend to pop up. Um, but they have a, just a little bit of adjustment, not much. They work pretty good. They'll do the job. But what I like, I found these new latches on Amazon and uh, I did a search for draw latches. And the uh, little J hook that you put your loop in right here in this area, it's a lot thicker than the radical. And as you can see, there's a lot more adjustment in this uh, type of latch. Plus the other cool thing for locking it down, I'll show them how it works. Once you lock it down, there's a little, little uh, I guess you'd say a little loop tab up there that you can put a pin in to help really lock it in. Whatever. Are you tired of these old radical top latches? God, these things are junk. You need these guys. Nice and sexy, really thick material. They're gonna be great in your truck. They're nice and beautiful. But if you call in the next 30 minutes, I can go ahead and throw in a fourth one for free because I can only get you three. Now, you have to call in the next 30 minutes because you can't do this all day. My operators are standing by for your calls. Now that we got our top in place, we're inside locating where our latches go. First, we'll start with our roof. About right here is where we want to put it. So get it roughly in the place you want it. I'm real happy with this area right here. Take a marker and then mark your spot. There we go. Now we'll use some steel rivets and rivet this in and then we'll move on to our hasp. It looks like we may need to trim a little more off of our kit for clearance. This is normal, so don't worry. So just like the driver's side, we're gonna go ahead and mount our latch for the top portion of the roof here by the main windshield. Um, it's pretty much the same as the other side. You just flip it over, reverse, same thing. Mark your holes, drill them, and throw in these little guys, some pop rivets, and you'll be good to go. Well, now that we got the latches finished for the top two A-pillars, we're gonna go ahead and hit the ones on the cab wall. So we're gonna pop the seat forward, and go ahead and figure out where we want to put these latches. Now that we've got our latches installed, 
We did a dry fit of the kit. We just kind of put the kit on there and then lash it down to check our fitment. The fitment looks pretty good. Now it's time to epoxy. But before we take it off and actually epoxy the kit on there for real, we put masking tape on front and back of each side of the kit. That way, if any, when you clamp it down, if any epoxy squeezes out, it doesn't get on your paint. This paint isn't worry, enough to worry about. That stuff is hard to get off the metal. You don't want to run it down your windshield or anything like that. So now let's take it apart and actually install the epoxy and uh, get it going. For doing your epoxy on your convertible top, this is what I like to use. It's called Speed Grip. It drives in 15 minutes by Norton. It's structural adhesive number 15. This stuff, when I say it dries in 15 minutes, it's dry. You gotta do it in a special gun. Comes with two nozzles. And this stuff in 24 hours, this stuff's hard as a rock. Now you could also use a few other substitutes. I know 3M Panel Bond is a pretty good one. There's a few other, other products out there. I'm not really sure, but people have discovered it. And, but this is what I rely on. And this is good stuff right here. To prep the kit before you glue on any of it to your truck, you want to, any portion of it on the inside that touches bare metal of the truck, you want to scuff up really well, as you can see here. Now you could use rough sandpaper, probably uh, 80 grit or anything you like. What I personally like to use is a barrel sander for a Dremel. It works really quick, works really good, as you can see. This gives it a good bite for the epoxy to glue it to the truck. You do that to all the parts of the convertible kit on the inside that will touch metal. Now you're ready to epoxy it on. Now the original version of the Radical Tops or AIM kits used to include a series of these wooden blocks. Uh, what these are designed to do is hold the shim the kit between the ABS bows and the sheet metal to pull it the top of the ABS bows tighter to the roof. These are approximately three inches long, uh, uh, one and nine sixteenths inch wide, five eighths inch thick. D uh, they'll use two different sizes between the windshield bow and the roof bow. They no longer bring these with your kit, so I made some myself. You'll have to measure uh, inside your bow to get the proper size that you'll need. Now, once you epoxy your kit, you will use these wooden blocks and shim up on your plastic bow up in the cavity between the sheet metal of the roof and the plastic uh, ABS bow. Uh, what I like to do is uh, before I slide these in, I cover them in the epoxy and slide up in. That way they're good and solid and sealed off and they work very well. Uh, each kit is different between your truck. So you'll have to measure from your sheet metal to the, to the bottom of there, bottom of your rib to get the exact thickness. And you push these in and ab above the roof on top of the outside, it pulls the plastic kit nice and tight to your roof and gives it a nice clean look. Okay, now we've actually got the epoxy on the kit and installed, you clamp it down and then let it dry 24 hours. So we gotta let this thing dry. You can see some of the epoxy kind of oozing out. Uh, so it's a good thing we put that tape on here. But if you look across the top here, that's a nice seal across the top. It, it works, it's gonna be great. Uh, same with on the cab wall. We would have uh, filmed actually putting the epoxy on, but there's only two of us and we needed both of us to get this on. So it's always good to have a friend help you with this. But, you know, you get the idea. After this, we still gotta install our door tops and our cab wall pieces. But. This is it so far. We'll wait 24 hours. Tomorrow we'll come out, we'll take it off and uh, pull the kit off. Now that our epoxy has set up, it looks pretty good. It's been 24 hours, we pulled the roof off. Now we just need to install the back cab wall pieces and the top of our doors. Here's the roof here. It already has the cab wall pieces here. The original pieces way back when from Radical it used to be made of ABS, the same as the kit. Now it's made of a U-channel of metal. This is just sitting in here. To get this in, you measure from the end of your kit on the cab wall to this side here. And then you mark that on your piece of metal and you cut it, that way it trims the fit. It's up in there, it's just sitting there. And what you wanna do to install these, since you don't use the epoxy since it's metal, 
mark you a hole here, one on the other side, and maybe even one in the middle. And then you drill it from the outside. Right here. You wanna do your cab wall first. Make sure it's even with the tops of your plastic uh, uh, and cab ends. Once you do that, then you could go back to your roof, put your roof on with this on. That way this will fall down into place so it stays even with everything. Instead of, if you push it all the way up and screw it in, you, if you, depending on how you ground your metal, you could have a gap along the cab wall. So get, get the cab wall piece screwed on first, then come to your roof and mark that and screw it on. We're gonna mark it. As you can see, we got our back cab wall piece that goes on the cab itself, not the roof, marked. One on each end, and one in the middle. We're gonna drill this out. We're gonna start with an eighth inch bit and you just use self-tapping screws. Once you get it drilled out, put it on your cab and uh, drill and mark it. Then you can screw it in place. Now we got our cab wall piece on. You can see here that I've, it's nice and flush. We got it screwed on. I screwed to the back of the cab wall. That way it pulls it straight to the back, nice and flush with this, the same as this side, so it matches. I got one here, one in the middle, and one on that side. If you look across the top, it's nice and smooth, nice and flush, really nice fit. Now we'll do the one on the uh, roof. Now, as you can see, we got the cab wall pieces in place, screwed nice, even, all the way across, nice and tight. Now we'll remove them and get them painted black the same way as everything else. The rear cab wall bows, both for the roof and for the cab, are now painted. Just wait for this to dry, then I'm mounted up on the truck. Now we're ready to turn our attention towards the door caps. We already have them ready to go. It's been trimmed for the uh, the window. We got to clean it up just a little bit. As you can see, it's been scuffed on the inside, ready to go. Paint's been removed. We just have to attach it. Now, when you do attach it, before you do, make sure you put the cap on and roll your window all the way up. This will make sure that you have proper room right here where you cut out the groove for the window. Now, after that's done, you can roll the window back down, then remove your door cap and put your adhesive in here. For my adhesive, I like to use the JB Weld RTV sealant and adhesive. A lot of people just use the regular black silicone and that's what this is, but this one actually acts as an, adi as an adhesive. It has a little something extra in there and that works pretty great for me. So. We'll put a little bit around the inside of the cap where it's scuffed up. You can see it here. Only on the parts that touch the, the truck. Before I put my silicone inside the end cap to mount it, I have drilled a pilot hole in the door and in the cap. This is to ensure, even though this moves around a little bit with the silicone so it's not permanently attached, that way it can flex a little bit as you open and close your door the screw will help it so it won't fly off and you won't lose it. Just a precautionary measure. It's now screwed in. The silicone's all over on the top. It's mounted, it's down, it's where it needs to be. Now I got a good fit. Just the way you like it. Now repeat for the other side. As you can see, we got it all painted up. It's now mounted. You can see where it's all screwed on. Now little fine details we're going to paint these screws black so you can't see them but you can see it's nice and flush even with the kit looks pretty good we'll look at it on the truck too you see what i'm talking about the door cap should be even with the, the cab cap should be nice and smooth and even with this just like that all the way across now that it's mounted up so that's what it looks like okay so what's next if you made this far without trying to kill yourself or somebody else that's helping you congratulations because that's usually the way it works. So now that we got those details, the last thing we need to worry about is doing the silicone. Now, I won't be doing it on this truck yet because it's not being painted yet, so I wanna wait until I paint it. But here's what you need to do. If you come in close here, basically what you wanna do is run silicone right at the edge of the kit, all the way across here. So you wanna put a piece of tape above it on the kit 
and put a piece of tape about an eighth inch away from the kit across there. Then you can run your silicone in there. And then when you pull the tape off, it's got a nice clean look. You wanna run your silicone here, anywhere the cracks are open and all down in here and fill this in right here. Now, like I said, this isn't being painted yet. So I'm gonna wait till I get it done painted and then I'm gonna do the silicone so it's got a nice, nice clean look. Now also on the cab wall, you want a silicone right here where your cab pieces meet the cab wall piece. Across here just like that. You can make a clean edge and put tape on each side again and silicone across that. That'll give you a nice waterproof edge. The final thing you have to worry about is weather stripping. We'll go through what we got and show you what you can use. I'm not gonna put the weather stripping on this truck just yet, but I will get to it. It comes with a lot of weather stripping and then there's pieces that I can suggest that you can add. So let's take a look at that. So here's the various weather stripping that came with the kit. It had three different bags. Now these first two bags had self-adhesive stuff. That's a triangle like that. Same with this one here. Now, these can be used up in here in your window channel. You can see where the window would roll up against it here. And when you open and close the door, it would hit back just like that against it. You can put this stuff here and then all the way down here. This next bag has stuff that looks like this. And it's, it's adhesive backed. And this stuff can be used across your convertible bow on the inside here. Now, the last stuff that came is what's called lacing or wind lacing. And it looks like that. Now, the place where you put this if you so desire, right after, you know, this all gotta be cleaned up. The metal right here is still rough. That's the window channel that I cut off. Here's the, here's the other one still there, but the outer one, so the window, will, the door will open and close the window up, needed to be cut off. Now this piece of metal, a lot of people I've seen clean that up and just paint it, or this could be trimmed back a little bit more if there's not enough room, and you put your lacing on that. So it has a nice trim look. Here's the other weather stripping I like to use. It doesn't come in the kit, but it can be found online. This goes on your roof portion on the same spot where the window would almost hit against where the other rubber would go. And the good thing about this also is the window, when it opens and closes, it goes right against that rubber edge. And this is attached the same way as the uh, wind lacing right up against that edge right there. So that's it for the convertible top. It's not too difficult. If you're a mini trucker who does your own mods, man, you got this. If you do one, post up pics. We'd all love to see it. And we all love to see your rides. So keep the dream alive, keep on mini trucking, and get out there and cruise. Love to see you out there.